As the Red Wings prepare to take on the St. Louis Blues later tonight, Steve Eiserman has a chance to do something very, very funny. Because earlier today it was announced that forward Jakob Vrana has been placed on waivers by the St. Louis Blues. Now, the interesting thing about this waiver situation with this particular player, Jakob Vrana, is that yesterday, you might have already seen the tweet here, we actually had word from Blues insider Jeremy Rutherford that Vrana will be placed on waivers by the Blues according to a source. This, again, was from yesterday, December 11th, 2023. Now, you could understand people's sort of surprise and confusion when later on, on December 11th, 2023, yesterday, Vrana wasn't placed on waivers. We had ourselves a follow-up thread here from Rutherford saying that Vrana's camp was told this morning by the Blues that he would be placed on waivers according to agent J.P. Barry of CAA. Something changed after that. It's not uncommon that teams re-engage or engage in trade talks. For now, Vrana is in limbo until a trade or waivers. Now, again, this is yesterday. Now today, we have ourselves the conclusion. Jakob Vrana is officially on waivers via Elliot Friedman. And this is a very interesting story because Jakob Vrana is 27 years old, decent size, 6 feet, 196, a left-handed winger, signed till the end of 2024, making $2.65 million a year. 2.625, excuse me. Initially a top-round draft pick by the Capitals back in 2014, Vrana has since then been a very intriguing name, boasting 40, 50-point seasons with the Caps earlier on in the late 2010s-ish. He was a really nice scorer. He had a great scoring touch. He could score at will. And he was actually one of the better 5v5 goal scorers in the entire league, only behind Austin Matthews, I think. Something crazy like that, wasn't it? Vrana was an interesting player. And he eventually got sent over to Detroit in the Anthony Mantha trade back in 2021. There, he played 11 games to end off the season with the Wings, had 11 points, and a lot of people were super hopeful for the future for Vrana. The only problem was, Vrana ended up exhibiting some really bad injuries that slowed him down. He only played 26 games in 21-22, and the season after, I mean, he only had 5 games played with the Red Wings and 17 games with the Grand Rapids Griffins. It was in this time in 22-23 where Vrana was exhibiting sort of a really difficult relationship with the Red Wings. There were some controversies going on as to whether or not Stevie Y or Vrana, one of these parties, was being antagonistic towards each other, whether or not Vrana deserved more playing time, etc., etc. It was just an ugly situation all around. So the Wings traded Vrana over to the St. Louis Blues for a very cheap price. This is the article back when everything went down. The Wings received a 7th round pick in 2025 and prospect Dylan McLaughlin for Vrana. That's it. Really bad trade from a value-to-value -value perspective, taking a look at what Vrana ended up becoming. 14 points and 20 games played with the Blues to end off 22-23 and 10 goals in that span. So his goal scoring was still there. This season, though, things have gone off the rails. The guy's only played 19 games, he's had 6 points in those games, and he is being sent down on waivers. Why exactly is this going down? Well, you can be the judge. A guy who has exhibited differing problems in regards to his deployment and role in the team, eventually getting traded away from a team wherein he did exhibit those problems and now he's on a different team where waivers is the option here. Your guess is as good as mine as to what's going on with Jakob Vrana, but to give us a bit of an expanded look, we're going to go over onto a few extra tweets here. This is what Jay Fresh went out there and tweeted. Vrana will be placed on waivers. He is still a speedy scoring winger who creates offense off the rush, but when that's the one thing you do and the shots aren't going in, then it's a much tougher sell. Vrana still is an 85 percentile wins above replacement player, 70 percent in offense, 98 percent in goals, and then you have yourselves the response here. I mean, Jay Fresh goes out there and says, if anyone, the Blackhawks, but I suspect that this will be nothing more of an interesting summer project signing than a waiver claim. His cap hit is also $2.6 million a year, as Detroit retained 50% on his deal when they traded him over to St. Louis as well. 
We also had ourselves another tweet from Dre Fresh. Verona is kind of a tough player to find a fit for. He's kind of a makes his own offense player, so he doesn't really work with high end line mates. He's not a factor on the power play, and he's very poor defensively. Tough playoff record, too. He might not be motivated to be a skill player on a bad team. I like him a lot, and his scoring skill off the rush when he's on is borderline elite, but I have a hard time fitting him onto a contender, and I just don't know if he'd work as, say, a first liner on the Sharks, etc. There's a reply here, actually, that is interesting. If he can play right wing, I think he could compliment Drysidle very well. However, his defensive numbers are so troubling, he could be worse for the line than Connor Brown. That line would concede four goals against a game. So, not really the best ideal fit here. Now, the reason I'm making this entire video in the way that I am is because Verona being placed on waivers did garner some discussion from the folks over on the wing sub. They're being facetious. They're joking around about it, saying, hey, like, what if we picked him up? What if we got him back on our team? He's got an opportunity here, and the wings are playing the Blues tonight. So if you really wanted to do something crazy, Stevie Y, you wanted to go nuts on all of us, you could try to claim this guy. And uh, yeah, he just leaves St. Louis with the team. Right? I mean, they're playing in St. Louis, so that's how everything's going to go down, right? But assuming Jakob Vrana and his $2.6 million AAV, which is cut from half because the Red Wings are already retaining 50%, if Vrana gets claimed by Detroit, for example, let's say the weird case scenario happens and the Wings decide to claim him, then all of a sudden, I mean... Detroit ends up paying the full salary once again because they're already retaining 50%. No matter where Verona goes, they'll hold on to 50% of that contract. So if they get Verona back, then that just adds on the extra 50%. There's no real shenanigans to go out there anymore. I don't know if that, like, what does that do? Like, does that change the salary cap retention? Like, let's say Verona gets claimed by Detroit. And now the Red Wings are paying his full $5.2 million a season to him per AAV. If the Wings claim Vrana and then they trade him away again, what does the contract look like there? Is there automatically a 50% retention from Detroit or is it the full contract amount again? I'm not really too sure how the NHL works like that, but I would assume it is the former. I would assume because there's already a retention on the contract, that retention is permanent. Because 50% being retained by Detroit, I mean, you could kind of fill in the blanks there as to how everything goes down. But still, at the end of the day, Jakob Vrana is a skilled player that just cannot find a gosh darn fit. Things are not going well for this guy, and his downfall needs to be studied. Because after going from years where he's legitimately good, point per game guy with Detroit, slowed down by injuries, and then there's the controversy which leads to him getting traded, 14 points in 20 games played to end off the blue season in 22-23, Let's do 14 divided by 20 and multiply that out by 82 because Verona was on pace for 57 points on the year and what is that, 40 goals? Like, he was a really good goal scorer, one of the best 5v5 scorers in the entire NHL behind Austin Matthews and now this guy's getting waived. Like, what, $2.6 million on the books, a team may go out there and take a chance on him if they see more value than problems, but... Again, like we had talked about with the Corey Perry stuff from a few weeks ago, when good players get sent down on waivers, it's normally not because they're not good, you know? And they normally always clear, because there's usually reasoning for these players to get sent down, and there's usually other GMs in the NHL who kind of know what's going on, and thus don't want to take their chances. Like, we talked about this a few weeks ago, but with Corey Perry, he was so good that if a team went out there and actually claimed him before his contract got terminated, that would not have been surprising. Now for Jakob Vrana, this guy is on the waiver wire too. There aren't really any rumors saying that he's going to get terminated, but, I mean, look, Rutherford said it yesterday. It's in limbo. Vrana is not going to play in the NHL until a trade or waiver. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about this entire Jakob Vrana thing, whether or not Steve Eiserman actually has himself an opportunity to do something really gosh darn funny, and what are your thoughts in general about Jakob Vrana as a player? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this British Ash Rolls 99. And bye.